All apparitions or manifestations are nothing other than mental fluidal power, which are made mobile via the subconsciousness of an incarnated new personality or by a living human being whose psyche state and subconsciousness activate these manifestations. A process which takes place unconsciously or subconsciously, whereby the person is absolutely not aware, but rather only has a subconscious cognizance. Here, there is an example from the United States. Always around 4 p.m., a so-called apparition or ghost of an approximately 10-year-old girl would come singing down the stairs, go to the garden, and walk around here and there inside the house. Parapsychologists were able to determine that the child had become an old lady who had lived in the same home. Each time this old lady would nap in the afternoon in her armchair, a strong memory would awake of her childhood and the house in which she lived when she was younger. In this manner, she unconsciously activated deposited mental swinging waves or fluidal powers in the house, whereby manifestations of the child arose. If a person lives in a house for many years, then the fluidal powers of that previous tenant are perceivable if one is sensitive enough. For example, at Hinterschmidruti, the house where Billy lives, in the early years, from time to time, a shadowy figure would dart through the kitchen, the living room, and the ground floor bedroom. Also, there would be a racket in the attic that often people could not sleep. When someone would switch on the light in the attic, then suddenly there would be silence. When the person would leave, then the noisy activities would restart. This pertained to fluidal telepsychokinetic powers. Generally to say is that the more labile a person is who lives in a fluidal power laden house, the more these manifestations can let off steam. It is not possible to transfer mental fluidal energies from one object to another, but an overlaying is possible in the sense that the stronger power, whether negative or positive, suppresses the other. For this reason, a valuable memento, which one wants to retain its value with regard to its mental fluidal energies, for example, a ring, must never be stored in a purse or any other place where it can come into contact with other things which are laden with other strange fluidal energies. There are four essential possibilities for the purification of a room in regards to mental swinging waves through which manifestations are triggered. Over years, one can overlay the fluidal energies with incense and at the same time with one's own fluidal energies. With an open fire, but this may be very difficult because the room must be scorched. Through flowing water, by which the room must be washed out for some time, which naturally is not possible. With standing water, the room cannot be sufficiently washed out. If a strong personality appears whose mental swinging waves, the fluidal energies or fluidal powers, are stronger than the disturbing, deposited mental swinging waves of the creating person. Thereby, the old mental fluidal powers gradually become overlaid and finally disappear. That process, however, takes years to complete. Pure thought swinging waves, whether positive or negative, arise from thoughts themselves, whereas mental fluidal energies arise out of the entire block of the mental or out of the thoughts and feelings as well as the psyche and the material consciousness. Pure thought swinging waves are nothing other than electromagnetic swinging waves which harbor immense energy and powers in themselves which can be preserved over thousands of years. Contrary to the entire mental swinging waves or mental fluidal energies or mental fluidal powers, pure thought swinging waves do not deposit themselves. The thought swinging waves strike the fellow human beings, however, without objects becoming affected. Therefore, only the entire mental swinging waves of the entire mental block 
deposit themselves, for example in churches, houses, monasteries, or any other places, as also in the impulse realm of the storage bags, naturally also in the body and the skeleton of the human being, as however also in the smallest of objects, even if their mass is minimal. If gewaltige blocks are formed from many human beings, as for example in churches and monasteries or places of pilgrimage, etc., then strong fluidal energies with great powers can strike with raw gewalt a human being who is sensitive to such swinging waves, energies, and powers. Because in these, they are concentrated in ausgeatete or degenerated form to such an extent that they are actually overpowering, which are destructive on those that think otherwise and think about the truth, whereas believers are further enslaved in the effect field and are held unfree whereby the energy and power is able to concentrate itself evermore. Neutral, positive, equalized thinking can be a great help, yet a real protection cannot be offered if the accumulated mental energy and powers form a mighty block. Thus, if a human being who is sensitive to these powers goes into a very old monastery or into a heavily frequented place of pilgrimage, then it is possible that despite their absolute equalizedness, they can be killed by the deposited mental swinging wave block by their energies and powers, if these are concentrated enough. This nearly happened to Billy in a very old monastery in Switzerland. This is particularly possible if, due to the higher evolution of the concerned human being, they live to a great extent according to the creational truth and its laws and recommendations, and are therefore sensitive, and are no longer accessible to a religious belief as a result of truth, cognizance, and rationality. With a sensitive labile person, their mental fluidal protective shield is weak and other swinging waves can penetrate into them and begin to terrorize or burden them, provided that they are of an antipathetic or negative nature. That is conditional in every case that the person which deposited the mental fluidal energies is existing again in a new personality and in a new body, or the mental fluidal energies were deposited in the past of their current life and are mobilized and brought into manifestation subconsciously in a back connecting form. The subconsciousness of the sensitive labile person establishes contact with the deposited mental fluidal powers. The person acts like a magnet. It is possible that there are wandering mental fluidal powers that can follow a person who is a sensitive labile person because a connection remains existing to the deposited fluidal block whereby the distance between the person and the old deposited fluidal powers can extend for thousands of kilometers. Consciously, unconsciously, or subconsciously, impulses can be called up from out of the storage banks, releasing fluidal manifestations if a back connection exists to an old deposited mental fluidal block. With a person who is strongly sensitive or labile in a consciousness-based manner, they can release visible or audible manifestations. They directly attract these manifestations so that with time these can gain the upper hand. So much so that apparitions are everywhere around where strong mental fluidal powers are deposited. However, in every case always belonging to the concerned person's personality lineage. These happenings are extremely rare and are exceptions to the rule. The human being can also create visible and acoustical appearances through their own actual acute consciousness powers in the actual life itself and therefore be the direct originator of these. It is possible that if the human being is capable of the powers and their application, 
they are able to call forth through the powers of the consciousness in a controlled manner any wished for visible physical appearance in the form of a projection which can also be visible by other human beings. There is still another possibility. Manifestations are called forth through psychokinesis that are not only detectable and audible, but rather under certain circumstances are also visible, in which case it is called psychoteleplasty. This is triggered by a psychic consciousness-based disorder which means that any thinking or feeling processes are wrongly directed. A person who falls into such a process is extremely plagued by their thoughts and feelings and is the direct source of the manifestations. The consciousness plays only a small role in unconscious form with human beings that are still not sufficiently evolved. When a person dreams, impulses from the unconscious of the consciousness can be passed on to the subconsciousness, and this, in turn, makes further impulses mobile, whereby mental fluidal power can become effective. In such cases, a memory can become conscious as a dream experience, or a memory can arise through a feeling-based intake of a notion. This is thereby comparable to when a person gets to know something from out of the storage bank in a notion-based manner. Once a human being is sufficiently evolved in a consciousness-based manner, then they can consciously connect with their deposited fluidal power of earlier lives, as also of the current life. If this is the case, then they already possess the ability to consciously find and control entry into the stored data of their own storage bank to create a contact through which information impulses from their entire past and all former personalities can be called forth and withdrawn. Thereby, it is possible to obtain much knowledge from the past and to merge this with new cognitions whereby a great evolutive step can be made. At the present time, this is not possible for the human being and will still take hundreds of years and perhaps longer before this is possible. Under absolutely no circumstances is it possible to communicate with deposited mental fluidal energies or fluidal powers. It is also not possible if a connection exists from this side, the actual life, with the overall consciousness block content, or if via the subconsciousness of the new personality, acoustical impulses are called forth. The old deposited mental fluidal powers are indeed there as mental things to work out, which in the earlier lives could not be mastered. And through this working out in the acute actual life of the new personality, there takes place the further evolution of the entire mental block.